wonderful food next door. We're going to try to keep the door closed so nobody can smell the aroma and the fragrance of the food, and I'll try not to keep you too long uh, in the house of the Lord. Um, if you have your Bible today, I want us to go to, let's see, I'm getting you to this. There we are. And I'd like to turn around and read with you to the book of John, chapter 7. I was praying about this, and the Lord kept leading me back to this scripture. John chapter 7, when you get there, say amen. The word of the Lord says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Okay. What am I doing wrong here, guys? All right. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, uh, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit. Say the Spirit. Say it with conviction. The Spirit. Which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I want to speak on the subject today. Let the rivers flow. <laughs> Let the rivers flow. Let's have another word of prayer. Father, we thank you again this morning as we come into your wonderful presence. Lord, I pray for the very rarefied air of heaven to be in this place, the very atmosphere of God to settle down on your people. God, I thank you, Lord, that you will hide me behind the cross, that the message of redemption will go forth and touch your people to strengthen them, to heal them, to restore them. Father, to put them on the path of light. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you're going to stretch forth your hand, God, and signs and wonders will be done in the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Lord, we pray thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come today in this service with power and glory, and we'll give you all the praise for it, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Look at somebody say, Let the rivers flow. Let the rivers flow. You know, water is very important. Because it's a river of water. Water is very important, very vital. It sustains life in our life. We need water. How many know that without water, you can't last very long on this planet? Scientists will tell you that you need water to have life. But as I, I want to give you a little bit of uh, historical background. I was writing notes this morning, so I apologize if I've looked down at my notes a lot. But there's so much I want to share with you. But we're just going to let the Holy Spirit flow. Amen? Amen. A little historical fact, this was um, the Feast of Tabernacles. In this feast, it represented God's provision for his people in the wilderness wanderings. Have you ever felt like you've been in the wilderness? Wandering in the wilderness in a dry place? Well, get ready. God's getting ready to bring you out to a river. God's getting ready to bring you out to a place that you can quench that thirst. Uh, the priest at that time would draw from the well of Siloam and carry them through the streets of the temple and at the temple, the priest would pour the water into a large basin, and in another basin, he would pour wine. Say water and wine. They're very powerful, symbolic truths in the Word of God. We know that water and wine represent the Holy Spirit. I also know that water represents the Word of God. How many are thankful for the Word of God? But at a certain time, this priest would take these basins and pour out the water and pour out the wine and it would run down those huge marble steps in Jesus' day and it would look like a flowing river going down. I want you to get the picture of that. When he poured these basins out, it would begin to flow. And that's where I got the title, Let the River Flow. But something happened. See, it pointed to a very beautiful spiritual picture here. It points to when rivers of living water and wine would flow through his people. It's talking about a time that we need the water and the wine to flow through us. You know, it's been said before that uh, there's not a famine of the word, but there's a famine of hearing the word. You ever heard that before? And likewise, in our day, say in our day, it's not a famine. It's not a famine of the water and the wine, but there's a famine of the revelation, the saturation, and the activation of the water and the wine in you, in your life. That's a whole nother, I'm going to tell you, that's a whole nother teaching right there. It's a, it's a famine 
of the understanding of the revelation of the water and the wine. There's a, uh, there's a famine of the understanding of the saturation. You've got to have revelation before you have saturation. Are you here? And when you have saturation, you will have activation. You have to walk out with the water and the wine. Jesus transformed and changed the water in the wine according to the word of God. See, God can take the water of the word that's in your heart and sooner or later, there will be a transformation process. Oh, hallelujah. It will begin to transform on the inside of you and the water of the word will begin to turn to wine. It will begin to have Holy Ghost power in it because the word of God is powerful, but when you mix it with the wine, praise God, when you see that transformation process taking place, it will change the way you think, and if it changes the way you think, it'll change the way you act. And when it changes the way you act, it'll change your community around you. How many can spare some change today? I want saturation, I want revelation, saturation, and activation of the water and the wine. Tell somebody, let it flow. Just let it flow. But see, it was at this time when the priest was pouring down the water and the wine on those marble, beautiful marble steps at the temple. Jesus cried aloud in John 7. He said, if any man thirst, Jesus was a Pentecostal because he was loud, hallelujah. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Because he that believeth on me. Now you got to understand this is a feast going on and they're just having a good time, a party over there. And Jesus on the other side said, if you really want living water, <laughs> if you really want the real thing, that's a type and a shadow. That's something great. He said, but I'm the reality. If you really want living water, come unto me and drink from me. And you'll never thirst again. How many of you drank of that living water today? How many of you tasted of the living water of Jesus Christ? Come on, praise God. The water and the wine is significant. See, they didn't realize it and they didn't know it, but Jesus was that rock that was in the wilderness. He was that rock that had been given to the children of Israel that brought forth the water. How many thank God for the rock? A rock is a sure foundation. I've heard a lot of people say, well, preacher, I'm hanging on. I'm just hanging on to the rope. I wish to God somebody cut your rope and get on the rock. Quit hanging on, get on the rock. Don't be holding on to Jesus come. Get on the solid foundation which is the rock of Jesus Christ. If you read that Bible carefully in the Old Testament, the rock would follow them wherever they went. Oh, praise God. And every time they needed water, water would come from the rock. They didn't realize that day that the rock was there. How many know Jesus rocks? I'm back from the rock and roll area. I'll get off of that. Praise God. Jesus the rock. My name's on the roll. How many believe in rock and roll? Oh, come on, turn that frown upside down. We need the rivers of living water. He was a rock in the flesh, in the temple, in the feast of tabernacles, in the feast of ingathering. How many understand about the three feasts? In the feast of ingathering, in the feast of booze, when you come together, it is intimacy with God. And when you have intimacy with God, you can't help but let the water and the wine flow. You can't help but let the river flow. You can't help the ooze out on somebody. Somebody gets close to you, just a little bit of sprinkle, just a little bit of that water and wine to ooze up on them and change their environment and change their paradigm and change their situation and yes, change their family and praise God, it'll change your church. When the water and the wine begin to flow in the house, hello house, you are the house. Know ye not that you're the house, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if we're the temple of God, the water should flow. Like Ezekiel talks about, the water flowing out from the door of the temple. We need the water of God beginning to flow again into a dry area. People are so tired of church. People are so tired of church as usual. At least I am. How about y'all? I hate religion. I absolutely loathe religion because religion kills the church. But you get a few people that have the water and the wine in their heart. You get a few people that allow the Spirit of God to flow out of them. It will change them. I said it will change them. Better yet, it will change me. The Bible said 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, it's not up here. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. How many are drinking this morning? 
Like that priest that poured out the wine and the water, Jesus came to be our Savior and baptizer in the Holy Spirit. The baptizer in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't really start seeing healings till the baptism of the Holy Ghost come in my life. I'm gonna tell you, my hands are burning. Somebody's sick out there. Who is it? Boy, let me lay my hand on you. My hands start burning. I'm ready to lay hands on y'all. Oh, y'all look like I've lost. Yeah, I'm, I'm drunk today. I'm drunk on the wine and the water. How many of y'all believe in the gifts of the Spirit? Well, hang around. You're gonna see them. Praise God. How many believe that the Bible is true? That the book of Acts is not completed and finished and closed up and for no, it's for today. God wants his spirit to move. God wants his, hallelujah, his power to move and God wants the wine to flow, the water to flow. Jesus used the analogy of rivers to speak about a spirit-filled life. Are you breathing? A spirit-filled life. A lot of people say we're full gospel. We're two-thirds gospel at best. I'll leave that alone. We need to be, see, Oh, let me get off of that. I better get off. I'll be preaching another sermon. See, rivers represent a flowing, a flowing of the river. We need a flowing. See, but before you can have a flowing, you got to have a knowing. How many of you remember me saying this? These are not just catchy phrases. This is revelation truth. Before you can have a flowing of the river, you got to have a knowing, a revelation of truth of the river. You've got to know who lives on the inside of you. It's not your heart that I'm worried about. It's that thing between your ears that we need to renew to the word. How many are born again? You better raise your hands. I can, I can crawl across the pew in a minute. Hallelujah. They got their foot up. And... If you understand what's in you, who's in you, you get a revelation. Before you can have a flowing of the water and the wine, you have to have a knowing of the water. You have to understand, have an aha moment. Sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks to me early in the morning, I have an aha moment. That's revelation in the morning. And I'm probably going to see that happen here when people catch on what I'm saying. They'll want to call me. Don't call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. No, unless the apartment or something, the house is on fire. Don't call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. Wait till Sunday. But when you have a knowing, say a knowing of truth, if you have a knowing of the water that flows, if you have a knowing of the river, praise God, there's so much I could talk about. I hadn't even got on point one. We may not finish it, but that's okay, isn't it? See, because when you're knowing, you begin flowing. When you begin flowing, are you writing this down? You begin growing. And when you begin growing, you'll start going. We want people to come to the church, but I'm going to tell you something. We're not supposed to wait for people to come here. We're supposed to go out there. Amen. Got quiet all of a sudden. Don't shout me down, amen? We want people to come here, but the Bible says go out into the highways and hedges. Send them out two by two, the number of witness. Send them out two by two. Go up to somebody and say, what's wrong with you, man? What's, what are you dealing with? Pray for them, Amen? And when God answers their prayer, just turn around and say, have a blessed day. They'll come looking for you. I love how Jesus, Jesus healed people. He said, don't tell anybody. You remember that in scripture? He would give a word of knowledge, prophecy. Jesus floated in all the gifts. He would give these things and he said, don't tell anybody. Well, what, what are we going to do with our big mouths? Hey, Amen. We're going to tell everybody we meet. We're going to share all the truth with people. Y'all doing Okay. You must have a knowing, then you have a flowing, then you have a growing, then you have a going. That's really neat, isn't it? We can make a song about that, Tammy. See, he chose rivers to describe the work of the Holy Spirit in a, notice it's plural, rivers. River, not river, but rivers. Out of your belly shall flow rivers, not river, but rivers. Rivers of healing, rivers of joy, rivers of the gifts, rivers of power, rivers of life. It is plural. All right, here's point number one. Where there's rivers, there's life. Where there's rivers, there's life. Again, the scientists tell you you can't have life without water. They've been looking at all these other planets, trying to find, they said, well, if there was life there, they'd have water there. 
Makes sense to me. How long can you go without water? We can't go long without the water. See, if you bring a river to a desert, it makes it an oasis. Ooh, I want you to get that when I stomp my foot. I said, when you bring a river to a desert, it makes an oasis. I'm praying that this place will be an oasis for people. The people that are thirsty, that are fed up with church. I'm with you right there. I'm on the same wagon. I'm fed up with church as usual. I'm fed up with religion as usual. I want to see people of all kinds, all colors, all nationalities come to church. Now that makes some scared, some glad. But I'm telling you guys, we need to welcome everybody in the house of God. It's not about race, it's about grace. It's not about skin, it's about <clears throat> sin. Amen? I hate a dry preacher. Amen. But that river produces life. An oasis. See, where there's a river, there's life. Say that with me. Where there's a river, there's life. You ever been to a river? You ever been to a stream, a river? There's all kinds of life in the stream. There's all kinds of life in the river. There's fish in it. There's fish in a river. I don't know how many fishermen we have here, but you wouldn't fish in a river that didn't have any fish in it, right? So if you go to a river, a living river, there's all kinds of life in it. But if you find a river that's dried up, all you find is dead fish, stinking carcasses. And see, that's the problem. If there's no river, there's no fish. Be ye fishers of men. We're considered fish. And if the church has no river, all we've got is a bunch of dead fish on Sunday. Woo! Amen, Pastor. That was a good point. I don't want dead fish, stinking fish, stinking religion, stinking traditions. I'm about to get in trouble here. I'm very result oriented if, it, if it's not let me use country term if it ain't working throw it out well pastor we've been doing it like this for years I'm getting out here on a limb that's where all the fruit grows amen don't grow around the trunk grows on the limb we've been doing it like this for years and years and years well has it produced any results well no well throw it out if it's not working throw it out and if it is working leave it alone why do people have to get in the middle of something? If God is moving in a certain way, and when I'm going to tell you, when revival starts breaking out, not just, when I say revival, I'm not talking about a series of meetings here. I'm not talking about some guy with, a, with an alligator briefcase. I'm talking about revival in our heart. When revival breaks out, guess what's going to happen? People are going to start coming and say, let me preach here. Woo, let me get in the middle. Oh, I'm getting really dangerous now. Well, where were you when I was struggling? Where were you? Is this Okay. Where were you when we felt like we didn't have anything? And I say we as a church. But you let the glory, you let the whirlwind of God's glory come down in the church. Everybody wants to get in here to make a name. See, I'm not trying to make a name for myself. I'm trying to give you his name. I'm trying to talk about his name, his glory, his power, his anointing, his river. His river. Where there's river, where there's rivers, there's life. Rivers of pure life. Nothing worse than dead fish in a church. Nothing worse than the stink of religion. If you go in there and it's dead at three o'clock in the morning, find you somewhere else to go. I'm gonna go ahead and be bold this morning. If you're not getting what you need, you need to find somewhere where you can get it. If you're not getting results, if you're not seeing people come to Christ, if you're not seeing people discipled, if you're not seeing people healed and raised from the dead, and the people, I'm telling you, in the glory of God manifest, find you somewhere where you can get a hold of the river. I'd rather have a river any day than a mud hole. Woo! Come on, I'm preaching good. Help me out here. This river has life in it. It has fish that swim around. There's, there's motion, there's activity. We're gonna have a lot of activity in our church, but the purpose of activity is to draw people here. Amen? We got the sweetheart bank, and we've got the, uh, what is the next thing coming up? Uh, Super Bowl party. And as long as the Seahawks win, praise God, I'm just kidding. 
It's to rub elbows with people. We're going to have Cowboy Sunday. We're going to have Throwback Sunday. How many like to have a 70s Sunday? What's a 70s Sunday where you wear bell-bottom pants and got the big old, you know, hairdos and... Pastor, that's silly. People will come to it. But the point is, it's not about the programs, it's about the power behind the program. It's about the presence behind, oh, come on, the presence of God behind the people. I like activity. How many like activity? How many like results? Things happening, things moving. A river moves. See, the life from the river is not just produced in us, but the pure life, the living water, flows through us. See, this river, this spiritual river, is pure. It's not diluted. It's 100% life flowing from God. Revelation 22 and 1 talks about a river. It said there was, he showed me. See, he showed me. He showed me. See, you got to, before you grow, you got to show. Amen. He's got to show you before he can grow you. He showed me a pure river of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God. I want you to understand something. It's not just coming from there, it's coming from here. There is a river. It flows from deep within. You ever heard that song? That's good theology. There's a river that flows from deep within. There's a pure river that proceeds from the throne of God. It's not just, where's God at? He's on the throne of your heart, isn't he? And it flows from the Lamb as well. See, this is a pure river that flows not only in us, but it flows through us. We don't need any beavers in the church damming up the river. Come on, church. See, people get nervous when the river starts flowing. They try to dam it up, try to stop it. It makes them nervous. You know why? Because they lose control. Uh Uh-oh. I want you to hear me loud and clear. God's in control of this church. I'm just a mailman. This okay? You can't be any more value, uh, more alive than when the Spirit, and valuable than when the Spirit is flowing freely through you. But we can restrict that flow. We can restrict that flow. If we have doubt, if we have discouragement, unforgiveness, those things will restrict the flow. Well, what do you need to do? We need to get rid of that stuff so the river can flow. That river produces life, amen? It rivers attracts life. If it's producing life, it's gonna attract life. When people get tired of the same old, same old, they'll start looking for life. Amen? When people get tired of the same old stuff, the same old cabbage, they start looking for life. That's me, I'm telling you, that's me. This is my personal experience. If it ain't happening, I'll find somewhere it is happening. You understand what I'm saying? By the way, we're going to have a youth minister. Thank y'all for getting, boy, y'all just got excited. I see you flipping pews. We're going to have a youth ministry kicking off again here. We're going to have all these things, but the first thing we need to have is a river. I'm talking about the river of water. I hadn't even talked about the river of fire. Whew. Somebody said there's a river. Number two, wherever there's a rivers, there's constant change. People have a, a, a problem with this word change. Change is good if it's from God. I said change is good if it's from God. A river undergoes constant change. How many of you have ever been to a river or a stream? Let's just use a stream, but if you've been to a river, and just say when you're 20 years old, you go to the river and you stick your foot in the water of the river at a particular spot. You can go back five days from that or even one day from that and go back to the very same spot and stick your foot in that river but you're not sticking your foot in the same river. You'll hear what I'm saying? The river's a river but it's constant change. The water that you stuck your foot in is, is a different water now. Oh God. You shouldn't stay in the same spot. When you stick your foot back in the river, there should be a change of water. What do you mean? There should be a higher understanding of the water of the word of God. 
every time you stick your foot in the river. See, we have, we have people that's sticking their foot in the water, but every time they do it, it's okay with me because, see, every time they do it, they're not stepping in the same river. It's a different water. See, something's gonna get on them eventually. Come on, church. Something's gonna impact their life eventually. That's why we need to be patient. Allow them to keep sticking their foot, not just on Sunday morning, but when they come around you because you are a river. If they keep coming to you for prayer, pray for them. If they need you to go down the street and just talk to them, do it because every time they do, they're sticking their foot in the river. How many can hear that? See, we, we have to be willing to be a channel of the Holy Spirit, a vessel of the Holy Spirit. But if you're willing to be a vessel of the Holy Spirit, you must undergo change. Change is inevitable. When you get into the river, or better yet, when the river gets into you, you will change. It cha it's a radical change. It changes our life. It changes our hearts. It changes our church. It changes our business. It changes our homes for the better. When the river flows, it's a pure river that proceeds from the throne of God. Not only up, but out. Not only up, church, but out. Tell somebody I'm a river. See, a river is so powerful. Man, time's moving. A river is so powerful, it makes its own channel. It can cut through solid rock wherever it's going. You ever seen a river do that? Seen some of these pictures? It'll cut through stuff. Matter of fact, you can get pressurized water and you can cut through wood. You can cut through stone, cut through marble. I'm trying to get that river to pressurize right here in this tri-community area, this tri-county area, to pressurize. Family, this is our Jerusalem right here. This is our Samaria right here. How many want to be in the mission field? Ain't hey, nobody raised their hand. We used to have a sign right behind the door. When you walk out that door, you're in the mission field. Thank God for our missionaries, but I'm telling you, we can all be missionaries when we walk out that door. There's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people suffering. There's a lot of people hungry. There's a lot of people dying. There's a lot of people sick. Take your pick. We are that river. And it's our responsibility to splash this water on somebody. Amen. Rivers have a constant overflowing. Are y'all getting this? Are y'all quiet because you're listening? Okay. As long as you're listening. Rivers naturally overflow their banks every two to three years. Whew. I'm just saying, guys, give us two years and we'll be overflowing our banks. Well, nobody shouted about that. I didn't see nobody jump and do cartwheels. Don't you want to overflow your banks? Have more than enough? Not just in the land of just enough or not in the land of not enough but in the land of more than enough? We've got to come out of Egypt through the wilderness wanderings into Canaan land. That river flows right through all three of them. Whew. How many will be in the land of more? See, the river overflows its banks. That's a natural truth, but it's a spiritual truth. There's people that are waiting in the wings. I'm prophesying to you. There's people that are waiting in the wings in this community and they're sticking their toe in the river. Amen, church. I'm not saying we're the only ones out there preaching the gospel, but I'm telling you there's people. See, God's gonna send the right people to this church. And they're out there. The river of the Holy Spirit should overflow our banks. It's, in other words, it should reach out to new places. It should reach out to, listen, new people. My heart is for unchurched people. I'm talking about tattoo wearing, braided hair, gauges in the ears. Man, y'all got really nervous, amen? I'm wearing a suit today just because I want to look pretty for my meet and greet, amen? They're the people that need to hear. 
I'd rather have people that don't have, you don't have to unteach them anything. They're just a big sponge. But you get people that's been in church for 40 years, 50 years, you can't teach them anything. Come on, let's pull our toes in. Hallelujah. I'm talking about religious people now. I'm not talking about people that are hungry for God. Religious folks, you can't teach them anything. As your pastor, don't waste your time. If they don't want to hear it, take your river and flow somewhere else. Does that make sense? See, I learned a long time ago, pastoring is like driving a bus. Some's going to get on, some's going to get off. Keep driving the bus. Is this okay? I don't know if you ever heard kind of preaching like this, but I'm just real. See, we've got, we got a real Jesus that will deal with our real problems, but he'll give our real answers. That spirit of religion is going to start coming down in this area. God's already given me a vision. I believe God's going to bring that spirit of religion down. People need to have a real Jesus. Amen? But the people I want is the people that don't know anything about God. They wouldn't know God from Adam's house cat. That's the people we need to start ministering to, witnessing to, right? Is this okay? Am I on number three? Let's see. I know y'all got that ready to go eat look on you right now. Well, there's river, there's progress. I'm getting ready to wrap this up. This is what makes rivers different from lakes. A river is constantly pushing forward and constantly pushing outward. Are y'all getting this? A river constantly pushes outward, constantly pushes forward. I will not be satisfied until I see people healed every Sunday morning. I will not be satisfied until I see people coming to Christ every week. We're going somewhere. We're pushing. We're pushing the devil back. Every time we speak the name of Jesus, I'm telling you the devil I'll be drinking Maalox and calling 911. Y'all remember that song? Come on, smile a little bit. I'm just about done. The river of the Holy Spirit won't just comfort us. It will drive us. It will push us for us. Here's what the Holy Spirit spoke to me this morning. This river will comfort the afflicted and it will afflict the comfortable. If you are comfortable in this church, get ready. <laughs> but if you're hurting and afflicted, get ready too. It's going to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Well, bless God, move me if we can. Keep staying there. I said keep on coming. I said keep on coming and the river of God will touch you. Hallelujah. It will change you. It will transform you. I'm trying to behave. We got visitors, but I'll tell you when the spirit gets on you like that, amen. It will change you. Now that we're awake, I'm getting ready to close. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, smile. I'm telling you, we can have fun in church, can't we? I get tired of that sour pickle religion. They come up to you, you want eternal life? I don't want yours, hallelujah. Come get what I got. I hope it's not catching. Glory. Are y'all with me? See, a river has power to push and a river has, have you ever been in a river with a boat? Help me, Lord, help me, Lord. If we wouldn't paddle against it, We'd have to go where the river carries us. There's a pull that the river gives. There's a momentum. See, the boat must learn how to surrender to the current of the river. Many of us have felt the tugging of the river. Many of us have felt the tugging of the Holy Spirit. Church folk have felt the tugging of the Spirit, but we resist. We start paddling the other way. Why do we do that? I say we, myself. Why do we do that? We, we, we need to go with the pulling and the tugging of the river. So let's untie our boat. Whatever your boat is, let's untie it and just go with the river. If you don't have a boat, just do the dead man's float. Just do that. Why? Because you are already crucified in Christ. The old man is dead. He's passed away. Amen. 
Tell somebody I'm going to do the dead man's float. <laughs> don't even have a boat. Well, if you don't have a boat, just float. Just come in here and float. You know what? You just learn, just learn how to float. Just learn how to float. We may not understand what's going on. I feel the river of the Spirit already beginning to flow. We may not understand what's going on, but that river, it'll help you float. If you're in the river of God, you will not sink. You will begin to float, hallelujah. You'll begin to flow with God in ways you never thought you could. You'll start seeing miracles happen in your life you never thought you could. You'll start seeing your family come to God and you'll be so amazed and so impressed. But it's not you. You just learn how to do the dead man float. The old man is dead. We are new men in Jesus Christ. We are a new creature. We are a new species that never existed before. And all we have to do, family, is float. Tell somebody just float. Let the river flow out of you. Let the river flow into your community. Let the river flow in your business. And watch God provide. Watch God heal. Some of you had flash flood experiences. It was good for a while. Revival was good. It was a flash flood experience. But something happened. We stepped out of the river. I'm going to say it again. Revival is not a series of meetings. My wife hates when I say this. It's not a guy with perm hair and alligator shoes that come to church. Whew. With the super duper whopper whooper sermons. Whew. Seven super duper whopper whooper sermons and everybody gets, it's a flash flood. How many hear what I'm saying? Now don't misunderstand, I'm not against revival, but what a revival means, but I'm saying we should be revived Sunday through Saturday. I can have my own, I can get my own church going, I can have my own praise break right by myself. But it is fun to do it with other people. I hear the Lord saying, the Holy Spirit's not in a hurry when it comes to your life. Just keep sticking your foot in the water. I said, preacher man, I don't know about this stuff. Just keep putting your foot in the water. Man, that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. That's what got me in church was the river, the power of God flowing. I was on drugs and alcohol, popping pills, and God brought me out. I got in the river. I just began to float. Just don't get in a hurry. Just allow God to step in. Step in. Prophet of God talks about an ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. And he started doing the dead man's float. The river holds you up. Amen? I'm concluding with this. Has those rivers of living water, these rivers that I'm talking about, that new wine from heaven, all these beautiful pictures that's been poured out on your life, have you experienced that? Well, let me ask, have you experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit? If you'd like to flow in these rivers, this is your opportunity. This is your season. This is your moment. The Greek is kairos. Your moment. You are not here by happenstance. You are not here by accident. You are here because this is your kairos moment. Hallelujah. God has come to tell you that he's head over heels in love with you. If God had a billfold, your picture would be in it. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. That's how much he loves you. You believe God loves you today? How many want to step into the river? Come on, stand all over this building. Doing good on time. Last week I preached, well, let me say something. Never give this preacher coffee before I speak. Because I'll preach everything I know in one service. 
I was good today. We did good. Y'all doing all right? Come on, look at me. Y'all doing all right? Can we take just a moment and pray for those that have a need in this building? I'm so thankful for that testimony we heard about Miss Margot. How God reached out and healed. Amen? We're going to hear more. I'm going to give people a five minute window to share. Because it's important for people to hear what God's doing in this house, in this community. I like results. I like to tell people the kingdom has come nigh unto you. That the devil has no more power. I'm beginning to see things over people's heads today. Let me share with you something. Depression has no power in the name of Jesus. Discouragement has no jurisdiction here in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands in the name of the Lord. This is your moment to be completely free. You're no longer under bondage. Jesus paid the price at the cross of Calvary. The devil has been defeated. He not will be defeated. He has been defeated 2,000 years ago. He was not only nailed to the cross for your sin, he was nailed to the cross for your sicknesses, your disappointments, your discouragements. He took the crown of thorns upon his head, the curse, so you can have a mind of peace, a peaceful mind. Hallelujah. Is there one today that would like to have special prayer? And then we're gonna ask Brother Gene to come up in a few minutes. And he's gonna pray over the food. Let's don't let the food get, a hold of, get ahead of the Holy Spirit now. I want to pray with you. Father, all the chains break over the heads of people. They're struggling and battling. Come on, keep your hands raised in the men in Jesus' name. Lord, I just declare that is their chiro, that is their moment right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Tammy, would you come play something softly? Dear, I may believe this is your moment. That this day is the first day of the rest of your life. This is a turnaround time for you. It doesn't matter. It does not matter what people have said. I'm telling you what God's saying. Glory to God. If you have to slip out, slip out quietly. But when you come to church, you may come one way, but when you leave, I pray that you leave another way. Changed. But when you become the church, this community will be changed. Can I say that when you become the church, because you are the church, this community will be changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands. Hallelujah. Lord, we welcome the atmosphere of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 What'd you have the Lord do today? Amen. Amen. Wanda, would you come stand behind her? Father, we thank you right now. She's told me about the situation, but Father, I know you can invade and penetrate this situation. 
that you could bring peace in the midst of a storm. Father, I ask you right now to release the ministering spirits, the angels of God about that house. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, Father, we take authority over that spirit of confusion that's trying to torment in that home. That spirit of religion, we break that power that's trying to come against them. Not because they have it, because somebody else is dealing with it. And Father, I believe right now that you're going to put the words in their mouth like a two-edged sword that speak forth the word of truth. I thank you, Lord, you're giving them the strength and the boldness to speak the truth in love. That's right, to speak the truth in mercy and love. And I thank you for that breaker anointing, God, to break those chains, those shackles, Father, over this person's mind that we're praying for in agreement that this person's mind will be set free that this person understands it's time to move on. I give you praise right now in the name of Jesus that doors will open for this person. Places will be available for this person. And in the name of Jesus, we agree in the spirit and we believe it's done by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and by the authority of the word of God. I give you praise right now for it, God, in advance. I praise you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah and amen? Say amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Tammy, sing a little bit for us with that beautiful voice God has given you. All this congestion and sinus issues and colds, we just curse them in the name. If that's you today, put your hand on your body. In the name of Jesus, all this sickness and all this stuff going around, we speak the blood of Christ. We speak the blood of Jesus. Be made every whit whole in the name of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Congestion go. Sickness go. We command you to go in Jesus' name. We take our place as sons and daughters of the Most High King today. I see great things in you. I see great things in you. But I see a hunger in you. You're hungry. Raise those hands. Father, I thank you for the hunger. Those that are hungry will be filled. Fill her today, God, with your presence in a greater level and measure. In the name of Jesus. Come on, saints. God is moving, doing something. That's right. Let it flow. That's that river. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That river is flowing. That river is flowing. You'll lay hands on the sick. They will recover. You'll speak a word in due season people's eyes are being enlightened. Your ear gates are being opened right now to receive information, not only information from the Spirit, but revelation from the throne room. God's going to give you throne room thinking today. And you're going to begin to think and have the mind of Christ. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We give you praise right now, Lord God. We just call forth that gift and revelation gift out of that deep well in our heart, Lord. Let that river begin to flow in beautiful, magnanimous ways. A blessing on your house. 
a blessing and your house will be a healing house. People will ask you for counsel, spiritual counsel. And God is going to put milk and honey under your tongue and you'll speak that word with tenderness and mercy and you watch God heal emotions and hurts. But you are a beacon. You are a salt and light. Everywhere you go, God's going to use you as his vessel. You're going to have dreams. You're going to dream dreams. And you're going to see things in the Spirit, says the Lord. But know this, it'll be from God. Yes, darkness will try to come and attack, but God's light and God's fortress is around you. You are his chosen, you're his child. And this is your Kairos moment. This is your time. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Come on, don't patty click. Give God some praise. We bless you, Lord.